It's been argued that while we hear much about the potential for vast improvements in cross-border payments, the industry for the most part offers similar services to those a decade ago. But instant payments, so-called one-leg-out schemes, where one part is located outside of the domestic scheme jurisdiction and new tech capabilities, have provided fertile ground for a revolution in cross-border payments. We're joined now by Fernando Lardies, General Manager of Pago Next Trade at Santander Group, and he's here to talk about what the future might hold. Um, thank you very much. I'm, it's, a honor. it's an honor to, to be here with you. Contrary to other opinions, your point of view is that not much has evolved in cross-border payments in the last 10 to 15 years. Why do you say that? If, if we think uh, about a lot of the improvements that the industry has introduced, and, and SWIFT has done a, a, a great deal of them, GPI tracker and a number of changes in the, in the system, we would say that a lot, a lot has evolved. But when we think about the user, the end user that is paying with his phone, he has instant payments available, he's doing a lot of things uh, through a lot of different channels, that's not an experience that we are seeing for international payments. Mm. So from the point of view of the user, I would argue that uh, a lot has still to be taken to the point of use. So what would you say are the current core problems in cross-border propositions? Uh, I mean, very simply, and again, if we go back to the end user, which we all, always should, ha should do, they, they perceive the solution as something where the cost sometimes is not clear or even it changes from one day to another and they don't know when the payment is going to arrive, unpredictability. Um, it is not functioning as a society that is used to all this instant, uh, predictable uh, feedback on, on time, on real time. Uh, that's not in the industry yet. It's, it's not how they, it's what they expect and we're not delivering that. Now you do say that the ingredients that are necessary are there uh, to fi finally evolve services. So what ingredients are those? Um, well, some, some that I've mentioned would be necessary building blocks that are there. Um, the cell phones, I mean, a lot of the technology uh, when you analyze what's required is there already and uh, to deliver as a, as a consumption, uh, to, to interact in real time. Instant payment schemes are out there and evolving and, and taking a lot of our activity in our domestic uh, world. It's just, it's not being translated to the, to the international uh, solutions. In, international payments is a quite complex element because it has the payment layer, so to speak. So to speak. There is a, the industry needs to solve compliance because uh, in international business is by nature uh, riskier activity that needs extra checks, uh, extra work done by the providers. And then there is a component of FX and liquidity to, to deliver the funds in another geography, etc. cetera. Um, that requires a lot of things interacting, but the solution, the, the, the IT that we have now is nothing to do with the one that we had uh, 15 years ago. While we haven't seen it applied in provide an integral solution. So the, the, the building blocks in itself are there, but we're not applying the, we're not getting the final solution. And I think part of the problem is a, the typical inertia of the incumbents. If we have something that is more or less working and we're getting relatively profitable uh, solutions out there, we don't necessarily put the benefit of the end user in our thinking. It, it often requires uh, an attacker, a challenge from, from the industry to make us wake up and, and, and think of something alternative. And that's also there. The revolution with open banking in many of uh, our jurisdictions has, has brought that in. Has, has opened up for new players that challenge the incumbents and quickly with new technology build a different solution and it's out there. Is this all uh, potential change that we're talking about or are some of these new solutions actually available and, and operational as we speak? They are. I mean, they, they're not widespread. 
but they are. They, they, because this open banking has allowed new players to go quick, um, there are some use cases that are evading the traditional solutions and are relying on alternative providers. Uh, normal, traditional, not normal, traditional international payments work for certain use cases, large corporate flows, uh, things that, re that, that justify a, a, a specific operational model. But if we think of, the, the, the closer we go to retail, to customers uh, doing, for instance, acquisitions in a, in a marketplace in another geography, where you need the payment to go quickly and you need the certainty about the amount because you've bought uh, an, an item that is $100 and you cannot be charged more, much more because if we, you charge a lot, the $100, it, can be, it has to be small compared to the item mm. acquired. That use case cannot be supported with the traditional systems and there are providers using this. All the big names in this arena of marketplaces, cross-border marketplaces, et cetera, They've come or they've, they've looked for alternative providers and the providers are there that are using these alternative technologies to have a different solution. So we talk about those necessary elements, but are they ready or are there areas where changes need to be made? They are, they are mostly they are ready, but to have a fair, um, it's, it's a question of putting things together, assembling it and, 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 and the ramp up, I mean, the, the, the deployment and the volumes always take a long time. And if we think anything that the industry change, a uh, classical example we, we talk in Europe is the introduction of the single currency and, and SEPA payments. It took many years for that to, to build up and assume all the volumes with instant is the same. So things take a lot of times. The ingredients are there, but I would highlight three things that maybe uh, are key. As, as it was mentioned in the introduction, one leg out element in the, in the instant payments schemes is, is important. Some geographies already have it, faster payments in the UK, some of the Asian uh, more advanced payment um, region um, countries have it. Eurozone is launching it in November, uh, but it's not sufficiently out there. And the one leg out, I think, is the critical element that will push the industry to move out of the general corresponding to one hop international and a domestic leg. That's one thing that needs to be spread out. Compliance always benefits from additional, the, the efforts that are already out there, but they need to be pushed further. The, the interchange of information in the industry so that we share information instead of everyone having to uh, do all the activity on their own and repeat it and not use what someone else has done before. And the third one where SWIFT is very involved is standardization of uh, of um, formats and, and messages uh, to not have to spend a lot of effort converting between different uh, formats when you go internationally from one geography to another. This is, in any case, just to reinforce, and I mentioned before, there are players out there, and, and for instance, the organization where I, where I belong in, in Santander Group, we already are supporting international payments to Brazil. Our clients can order an international transfer, close the effects uh, on their screen and the, and the payment gets there in seconds. Uh, this we are extending to other geographies and the same way we are doing this, other both incumbents and attackers are there. So the elements are there. Facilitation by the industry in the three areas that I mentioned would help. What about uh, crypto, distributed uh, ledger technologies, uh, central bank, uh, digital currencies? You've not named these as, as drivers of change. Why, why is that? Um, I have to be careful here because uh, this is very controversial. A um, few years ago, and I've been involved in this for many years, a few years ago we were thinking that uh, crypto was going to revolutionize everything. And, and, and many, of us, many of us heard about it as it's going to change how we do everything, right? And, and the years have passed, more than five, seven years, and still not making dramatic changes. Uh, the role that they're going to play in payments, it's clear that is not going to be, it's, I think it's clear, that is not going to be a dramatic alternative, although it will be present. It, it, we need to see where it lands and provides an alternative and it, and it grasps. So I think it will be there. And probably in international, I think it, it can make a, uh, uh, it, it's relevant. 
but it's not what is driving the change. The, what I alluded is, I think, more what is right driving the change. It will help later on, mm -hmm. but it's not the critical element at this moment. Mm -hmm. Well, we're in the right place to drive some of these discussions forward, of course, but sadly, that's all the time we have here at Cybers TV. But thank you so much, Fernando Lodias, General Manager at Pago Next Trade at Santander Group. A pleasure, as always, and we wish you a very fruitful week here in Toronto. Mm -hmm.